from the shining domicile that is Pittsburgh Comics. My old mannered comic shop owner, Colin McMahon, transforms into the world's greatest comic book talking TV host. Join us, true believers, for Comics Now! Hey everybody, welcome to Comics Now for April 2024. So spring is here and everything's gearing up. It's kind of like the plants where they're getting ready to come out. We don't have a lot going on in April because it's a lot of continuing stories and the publishers are gearing up for free comic book day, which is Saturday, May 4th. And that's when they kind of focus their energy into what's coming out then and what's going on the rest of the summer. So they, they're gearing up for all their big summer events. We're just not quite there yet. But that doesn't mean that we don't have a lot of stuff going on. Deadpool is back. He's got a movie coming in. We have a number one. Uh, Brainiac is attacking Earth in the pages of all the Superman family books. And the X-Men are on their way to the fall of the House of X, which is going to lead to a big rebirth this summer. So there's lots going on. Lots of neat stuff to read. Now, for book club, uh, one of my book club guys asked for more of a superhero story. We kind of been keeping a little more esoteric with different kind of books, like this month is Hellblazer. But so for book club, we are going to do Blackest Night, which is a big Green Lantern story written by Jeff Johns with art by Ivan Rice. This went, uh, originally it was through the entire DC Universe. You had miniseries involving Superman and Batman and Wonder Woman and all sorts of neat stuff. But it, it, the core, uh, Jeff Johns introduced all these different lanterns, the different colors of the rainbow. And this one introduces the Black Lantern, the Lantern of Death. And so how can this, uh, all the green lanterns and yellow lanterns and red lanterns and pink lanterns defeat the Black Lantern? So Blackest Night, we're doing that. It is on Friday, April 26th um, at 7 o'clock. And we do have pizza. So if you want to come, please come. It's fun. We, we don't discuss the book the whole time, probably about 15, 20 minutes. And then it's just a real fun discussion just with whatever's going on from a bunch of people. So now for the month, um, I've been reading a ton of books. Um, I kind of set a personal goal to read as many novels as I can because I have a lot and they're not going to read themselves. And my focus is on the the crime books. I really like the, the detective stories, the... Um, <laughs> Marley. The uh, Lou Archers and the Sam Spade and the Philip Marlowe's, that's kind of my, my go-to. So I was talking with Pat going, what should we do for a theme? And he said, why don't you do crime books? Because we have a ton of great crime books um, in comic form. Uh, little things, I just grabbed a bunch. Newburn, which is by Chip Zdarsky from Image. Uh, Brubaker and Phillips have done a ton of stuff. We have Criminal, which is right up, name gives it away, and also Fatal book called The Fade Out. Um, he also has a new series he's doing called Reckless, which has a bunch of books, but these are all just great crime books. Classics, like from DC, 100 Bullets. And um, one of my favorites, Darwin Cook's uh, The Parker books, which are just beautiful and right up my alley. So we're gonna have a big selection of kind of crime books for you to get an idea of, uh, to see what's good. Um, we really will be focusing on that and finding a lot of stuff you probably didn't even know existed. So that's what's going on here at the store. And now let's get into what's going on with comics. And we're going to start with Marvel Comics. Okay, from Marvel Comics, like I said, Deadpool number one. A new era for the merc with a mouth, a gun, and a sword. Introducing a terrifying new villain who won't stop until he catches Wade in his death grip. But all work and no play makes Deadpool a very dead boy. Uh, we also have a new Spider-Gwen series, The Ghost Spider. Trapped in the 616 universe for good. Welcome to New York. Gwen truly becomes a ghost spider when she moves full-time to the universe where Gwen Stacy died years ago. But why did she leave Earth-65? Why aren't the other spiders supposed to know she's here? Why isn't she supposed to suit up? And who will get hurt when she does? We also have Spider-Man Shadow of the Green Goblin. This is written by longtime writer J.M.D. Mateus. Uh, Norman Osborn is the Green Goblin. You know 
but he is not the original Green Goblin. Learn the shocking secrets of the Proto Goblin and its dramatic connection to the Osborne family. What role does a young Peter Parker, who has not yet understood his, his great power and his great responsibility, play in the unfolding of events? We also have Roxxon Presents Thor. From the pages of Immortal Thor, the Roxxon Age of Comics begins. In his secret identity as AI spokes guru Chad Hammer, the son of Odin knows Mana Gea is a top priority for heroes and for business. But when a group of insane environmental activists take saving the earth too far, it's time to uh, show them the wisdom of both sides as Thor. But which god of evil is prompting the kids to rebel? Could it be Loki, god of evil? Let's have Kid Venom number one. Japan 977. Kid Venom has made his presence known to the evil symbiotes taking people and creatures hostage. But who else has their eye on Kintaro and his symbiote? The world of Kid Venom expands as new characters and dangers are revealed. We have Giant Size Hulk continuing the Giant Size line. Riding the rails is no walk in the park, especially for the Incredible Hulk. And particularly when something, no, someone has been stolen from him by a gruesome new threat with evil machinations in mind. Clear the tracks, the Hulk is coming through. Also have some facsimile editions in April. We have Amazing Spider-Man 255 continuing that run. Secret Wars number four and Uncanny X-Men 130, which is the first appearance of Dazzler. Also a new Star Wars book, Darth Maul, Black, White, and Red. A prison ship transporting a cult known as the Final Occultation goes offline and Darth Maul is sent by Palpatine to investigate. What he finds on board is the stuff of nightmares. It's up to him to stop the profoundly dark and unstable force that wishes to bring chaos to the galaxy. Now on to DC Comics. New from DC, we have House of Brainiac. In Action Comics 1064 is part one. Brainiac attacks. Brainiac's Lobo army invades Metropolis in an action-packed oversized issue. The Super Family and all the heroes of Metropolis join the fight. But will they be enough to hold off Brainiac's lethal and crazed soldiers? Can Superman and Lex learn what Brainiac is searching for? He's not bottling Metropolis, so what is he collecting instead? So also part two is in Superman 13, and there's also a Superman House of Brainiac special, which is part 2.5. Uh, Power Girl 8 and Green Lantern 10 are also tie-ins to the event. We also have Nightwing 300. Since the 1940s, you've seen him go from acrobat to orphan, from Dick Grayson to Robin, from Robin to Nightwing. You've seen him work alongside the universe's most powerful heroes against existence's most sinister villains. You have seen Dick Grayson do so many things, but now in his 300th issue, you will see him. Well, you'll just have to pick it up to see. We also have a Nightwing annual, uh, The Secret Origin of B. Bennett. During Nightwing's recent pirate adventure, we learn that B. Bennett, Dick's ex-girlfriend, is a pirate queen whose father, the quartermaster, left her an entire pirate society. But what about her life before she became a pirate? Before she met Rick Grayson? Just what, and more importantly, who led her to where she is today? A backstory like no other, with a tale of betrayal, love, and independence. Harley Quinn is also getting an annual, and Flash annual. With Wally West missing in action, Central City needs help dealing with all the bizarre new threats that have arisen. So thankfully, Wallace West, Avery Ho, and Circuit Breaker are here to help. But can they count on Barry Allen, who is having a crisis of his own? We also have DC Spring Breakout. Uh, spring has sprung, flowers are blooming, bees are buzzing, Harley is bringing King Shark, or breaking King Shark out of Bell Reef Prison. All is right in the DCU as both heroes and villains face all sorts of different spring breaks. We also have, uh, from the DC Vault, the Sandman 19 remastered. So what they've taken is Neil Gaiman's Sandman 19, which won a, uh, what was it, a World Fantasy Award for Best Story, which then they made it so that comics can never win again. But it's the story of A Midsummer Night's um, Dream from Shakespeare that he adapted to the Sandman universe. 
Uh, colorist Steve Olaf has come back and recolored the book, so it's been remastered and they're putting it back out. Uh, the other facsimile editions we're getting from DC are Brave and the Bold 54, which is the first appearance of the Teen Titans, and Showcase 22, which is the first Hal Jordan Green Lantern. Now on to Image Comics. Image Comics has a bunch going on. The big thing is uh, Wednesday, April 3rd is Ghost Machine Day. That's the day the first three Ghost Machine books are all dropping the same day. It's not going to be the way every month. They're going to have different weeks, um, but they wanted to have one f day of focus for their number ones. So first off, we have Geiger number one by Jeff Johns and Gary Frank. Uh, leaving his home behind, Tariq Geiger now walks the radioactive roads of the former United States with his two-headed wolf, Barney. But as his enemies doggedly pursue him, Geiger discovers salvation from the unlikeliest of foes. But what secrets does this potential ally hold that could help Geiger? And exactly how many people are after the glowing man, and why? We also have Redcoat. This is uh, Jeff Johns and Brian Hitch. Immortal, mercenary, kind of a tool. Meet Simon Pure, the newest unnamed hero. British Redcoat and all-around rogue. Simon mysteriously became immortal in 1776 after a run-in with the clandestine cabal known as the Founding Fathers, which included George Washington, John Hancock, and many other prominent American Revolutionary War leaders. Since that fateful day, Simon has led a life of adventure and avarice, rubbing elbows and sometimes fists with many of history's most renowned figures, including his nemesis, Benedict Arnold. Um, he's also met Albert Einstein, Annie Oakley, and many more. One thing they all agree on, they never want to see him again. But what are the true origins and extent of Simon's power and the mysterious organization behind them? And how has it secretly shaped America and the world? And the third one is Rook Exodus. This is with uh, Gary Johns and Jason Fabach. Hundreds of years from now, the man known as Rook was, one, was once a simple farmer who fled the crumbling earth for a new life on planet Exodus, a terraformed planet where all of nature, including its imported animal population, was completely controlled by humans called wardens. But when Exodus's world engine failed, the warden's power fell into the wrong hands, creating chaos and mass evacuation for those who could afford it. The rest, like Rook, must scavenge for an escape vessel as the war for control of what's left of Exodus begins. We have a new one. Ashley Wood has a new one called 7174 AD. It's an all-new ongoing series collecting bits and bobs from Ashley Wood's storied career. Uh, we have a new Hack Slash, Kill Your Idols. This is collecting the Hack Slash stories that were in the uh, year-long anthology Image 30th Anniversary. Uh, we have a new Rat City number one. This is in the world of Spawn. Uh, Peter Cairn is an ex-soldier, an amputee, and a hell spawn in a post-war future. But Peter's not dead like Al. Peter got his spawn powers from the nanites in his prosthetic legs, nanites that were affected when Al Simmons initiated his necroplasmic detonation in the present. Al had no clue the effects would ripple across not just space, but time as well. And everybody here is excited about this one. Universal Monsters Creature from the Black Lagoon. Uh, years after the events of the original film, journalist Kate Marsden hunts for a notorious serial killer in the heart of the Amazon. Hot on the trail of this madman, she soon encounters an unexpected new threat. But is it friend or foe? Now on to Dark Horse. Uh, Dark Horse brings us The Butcher Boy. Deep within the back roads of the Pacific Northwest, an entire town fell victim to the brutal cleaver of the Butcher of La Perdita. But that was more than a hundred years ago, and in that time, the generational nightmare of murder and meat has been reduced to morbid clickbait folklore for bored travelers to share online. And yet some say the butcher still haunts the streets at night, seeking fresh meat for his larder. A true Lovecraftian horror, or just a f the feverish dreams of a mentally unstable serial killer. Six friends on a road trip are about to find out. Heart piercer number one. Adela thought she was saving the world, but hunting the great beast wound up dooming it. Betrayed by her lord and left for dead, she awakes in a dark world overrun by nightmares with a single mission on her mind. Revenge. Uh, well, so Eric Powell brings us Lester of the Lesser Gods. 
Lester, the LARPing bastard son of Odin, wanders the post-apocalyptic wasteland after thwarting Satan's attempt to bring about the end of days. But can this hero of the downtrodden survive the battle arena of Will Fry, the technomancer guy? Masters of the Universe Revolution. Fates and ambitions collide. Journey to the earliest days of one of the universe's most consequential team-ups. Hordak is an ambitious general, eager to make his mark. Skeletor is an aspiring mage, hungry for power. Joining forces, melding ancient Eternian magic with advanced Horde technology could bring them all their evil heart's desire. But they'll have to survive each other first. This is a prequel to the new Netflix series. We also have William of Newberry. This is by Michael Avon Oming. Hellboy meets Redwall. Loosely based on real events in the 12th century England during what was known as the Anarchy, a time when the country was beset with plague, civil war, and demons. William of Newbury is a, necrotic, or a neurotic monk, fearful of the earthly world, but confident and unwavering in the face of true evil. He fights the dead to restore peace, but his brother is intent on stopping him, fearing for his soul. Newbury is dark yet quaint, qu uh, deadly yet cute. Follow him as he negotiates with thieves, evades his brother and the church, and battles the undead and evil spirits. Uh, Witcher also has a new series, uh, Corvo Bianco, and there's a new critical role, Vox Machine Origins number four. IDW is bringing us uh, Godzilla Mechazilla's 50th anniversary one-shot, and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle wraps, uh, wraps up with issue 150 this month. We also have some new stuff from Boom Studios. Uh, Boom Studios brings us Blown Away number one. Unyielding wildlife photographer Bryn Brodigan, isolated in the remote cold of Baffin Island, sees something she can't unsee. An argument followed by an outburst of intense violence between two nearby climbers. Did she just witness a murder? In a frantic search for the truth, Bryn discovers just what she's looking for, but little does she know that more than the silent white of winter is keeping her company. We also have Uncanny Valley number one. This is by Tony Fleece and Dave Wachter, who's local Pittsburgh guy. Um, Oliver is a seemingly typical 12-year-old boy, except for a mysterious family history that seems to start and end with his mother and unexplainable powers, that is. He can do things other boys can't, to the point of landing him in, in some trouble. Baffled by the surreal, cartoonish nature of his abilities, and followed by a murder of peculiar crows, the mystery behind Oliver's family history finally unfolds. Um, and they're also doing Labyrinth Archive Edition, where they're reprinting the uh, three-issue Marvel miniseries from the 80s. Since they have the Labyrinth rights, they're bringing this one back. Dynamite has some new ones, a uh, big one being Hercules number one. The world's favorite demigod turned mortal is back, and he's about to embark on the biggest adventure since the Odyssey. The Greek gods don't really get why Hercules chose a mortal life over the opportunity to join them on Mount Olympus, but since he proved his mettle as a hero many times over, they're happy to enlist his help with missions that require interventions in the earthly realm. So when Aphrodite grants an artist wish that his sculpture be brought to life, Herc gets the call to clean up things up when the newly conscious artwork proves to be more bone-crushingly lively than expected. We also have a new Red Sonia book, Empire of the Dam. This is written by horror guy Steve Niles. Uh, after landing in jail following a night of drunken revelry, Red Sonia hears an outlandish story from a fellow inmate. Deep in the mountains lies a dead city in a valley with no name. Abandoned and forgotten, its fields and streets are littered with bones of two armies, all destroyed by a curse from a warlock who has long since vanished, along with his vast treasure, untold riches just waiting to be taken. Ahoy has a new one, Deadweights. Um, is this another exciting new superhero universe? No, just a buddy comedy about two unlucky henchmen trying to make their way in the world. Deadweights takes a hard look at what happens after the fight when the villains are tired of being villains and the heroes aren't as heroic as they want you to think. Valiant is back in a big way. Um, we just got a new uh, Bloodshot book last month. This month we're getting a couple one-shots. We have Punk Mambo, The Punk Witch Project. Uh, London is pulsing with energy, and guess who's about to set the city ablaze? None other than the electrifying Punk Mambo. Get ready for a wild ride as Punk makes a triumphant return to her roots, unleashing a tidal wave of rebellious magic. 
We also have the Dark Soul Side. Dare to venture into the shadows as Master Dark and his enigmatic sister Sandria find themselves imprisoned in the chilling depths of Soulside within the ominous Ring of Solomon. Uncover the dark secrets that make Nicodemo tick in this eerie exploration, a journey that peels back the layers of one of the Valiant Universe's most lethal pairings. Archie is getting back into the horror stuff, the, revisiting the cult of that Wilkins boy. This one's called Initiation. This is also written by Cullen Bunn, another horror guy. Uh, Bingo is now a music manager in The Devil Incarnate. He's initiating others by exchanging their souls for stardom. But is this what he really wants out of life? Is this what he works so hard for? Bingo embarks on a quest to return to his first love, performing music. But the road back to superstardom isn't going to be an easy one, and it's going to take a lot of souls to get there. Distillery is continuing with some more new, with another new one. It's called Spectrograph. This is by James Tinian and Christian Ward. For years, the mansion has sat strangely nestled into the coastline, just a short drive north of Los Angeles. Rumors have haunted the place for years. Its owner, a titan of American industry with a strange fascination in the occult and the paranormal. For decades, the richest men and women in the country have whispered to each other, trying to understand what he was building alone in that mansion for all those years. And now, finally, with his death and his estate finally open for sale, they are eager to find out for themselves. Mad Cave has gotten the license to Dick Tracy, and there's been a lot more excitement about it than I anticipated. So this kind of fits in with our theme of crime. Um, a new era for the iconic detective starts here. In the aftermath of World War II, the country stands frozen, waiting for the next shoe to drop. In the city, a brutal murder draws the attention of rising star detective Dick Tracy, who soon discovers the bloodshed is just the beginning of a complicated web that threatens to ensnare everything he cares about. We also have one called When the Blood Has Dried. Years ago, a stranger came to the little town on the edge of the southern territories. The locals eventually came to see this blow-in as one of their own. Now she has taken over as proprietor of the Laugh Inn, finding a semblance of peace after a lifetime of adventuring. However, the proposed opening of the branch of the Adventurers Guild risks dragging her past to the present. What would the townsfolk do if they discovered their beloved barkeep was once part of a ruthless band of rogue sellswords masquerading as noble heroes? There's a new publisher out called uh, Magma Comics, and I didn't have a lot of faith in them, but the sales guy made a fantastic presentation at our Comics Pro meeting, so I'm really willing to give these guys a chance, and I hope you guys do too. Um, first one's called The Principles of Necromancy, and this is written by Jackson Lanning and Colin Kelly, who have been a writing team doing tons of stuff. They've been uh, doing real well with Star Trek right now. Uh, the City King has driven the barbarian hordes to the edge of the world, ushering in an age of reason and medicine. But in the dark woods beyond his reach, where the last pagans still keep their ancient ways, a single man of civilization is about to show the true meaning of medical miracle. His goal? To overcome death itself. And God help the man or king who stands in his way. You know, so one called Silicon Bandits. In a near future where automation has caused mass unemployment, programmers Kenji and Aurora's careers seem safe. But when they are suddenly fired, the couple hatch a desperate plan, assemble the perfect heist crew out of androids they programmed. The ensuing crime spree goes perfectly until betrayal and sentence emerge to equally devastating turns. Oni Press has some new ones. Uh, Akogan, the Brutalizer of Gods. In an age thought forgotten, when man, monster, and the divine all strode the earth, a lone warrior emerges to test the immortality of the cruel gods who would deal destruction with impunity. He is a one-man reckoning that stands in defiance of his divine masters with a sword in hand and a thirst for god blood. His name, Akugan the Brutalizer. We also have Roboforce, which is part of the Nacelleverse. It begins here. An explosive new universe of toy and animation icons leaps into action with the unstoppable Roboforce leading the charge. Meet Max 89, the latest and greatest innovation in the field of robotics. As a member of Roboforce, the crew of highly advanced androids that are redefining technological advancement in the 22nd century Earth, there's no job too big for him to handle. But when their creator's newest invention is stolen by a rival company in a brazen act of corporate warfare, Max and the high-powered detonator are determined to get it back, even if it means breaking company protocol. Then lastly, Vault has a new one, Something Crawled Out. 
Edith Eddie Miller has no grand plans or great prospects. She spends her days sleeping in and her nights working shifts at a gas station. But when her younger sister fails to come home, Eddie unearths a web of missing girls and rotting bodies. The police prove useless, so Eddie teams up with her best friend Rainer in a desperate hunt to find her sister. The only thing is, Eddie believes her best friend might be the devil himself. So that's what we have as far as new stuff. Uh, the regular books are still marching on. Um, Spider-Man is marching towards 50. All sorts of stuff going on. Um, for book club, we are doing uh, Blackest Night. And for the month, we're doing crime books. And I'm really looking forward to scouring the store, finding a bunch of good ones to put out on display for you. So if you have any questions, uh, the website's Pittsburgh Comics. Facebook is Pittsburgh Comics. Or uh, <laughs> website's Pittsburgh Comics.com. Facebook is Pittsburgh Comics. Twitter and Instagram are PGH Comics. So thanks for watching and stay tuned for Comic Previews Theater. See ya. I am the first to see him, the stranger from the cold. Not a kingdom man, nor one of the tribe, but a man of shadow, dark promise and fear. Hello, my name is Dr. Jacob Oz. I have heard tell of the city's king's forces in this forest, routing out those good men who call it home. You look like such a man, the kind who could use my help. The necromancer. Our leader has been wounded. You will heal him. Very possibly. No diagnosis without examination, my new friend. Colorful bunch. Polynesian genetics. Hardy. But you're far from the lowlands. The city king is merciless. And he has horses. We have only our honor. Honor. Useless thing. Tell me, what has it gotten you lately? I am Black Iron, war leader and chief. I have no need for a witch. Good. A witch is at best. A competent herbalist. At worst, she's a charlatan with a strong understanding to psychostemesis. I am a physician, and you are quite sick. What do you ask for this healing? My diagnosis, prognosis, and treatment plan must be rigidly adhered to. No deviation. A man doesn't ask for wisdom and then not pay a heed. Wonderful. Then, to move forward, all I need is a commitment, doctor's orders, from here on out. Is that what you find in that book, Necromancer? Orders? Afraid it would be impossible to explain to someone so unlearned in the medical science. You have a liar's face. Your bargain is tainted with death. Swordfather, without his help, you will die in this tent. And you fear death, do you? I fear nothing but riding to war without the men who united our clans. Please, you must live. In the morning, Swordfather is healed.